Hello, hello, welcome to the show. This is Hack Hunter, everybody, and for those of you that are new to the show, I've been tattooing for over 20 years, and I'm here to pass on some of my knowledge to you guys and teach you how to better choose your tattoo artist for your next tattoo. Uh, last week, we went to check out some artists in New York, and while I was there, I found so many just god-awful tattoo artists, I had to make another episode. This time, we're checking out artists in Brooklyn. That's right, Brooklyn. I found some incredible talent out there also, but as always, I'm gonna start with the worst first. Sit back, relax, let's find some hacks. Alright, here is who I'm going to talk about today. Now, you guys, this review is going to be a little bit challenging for me, okay? Because I have a lot of respect for this, man. This is Alan Groove. He has been around for a long time. And those of you that don't know, back in the day, in New York, uh, in the 70s, early, early 70s, they actually banned tattooing. There was a huge hepatitis outbreak back then because there was no regulation, you know, it was the Wild West. And uh, it wasn't until about 20-some-odd years later, in like the mid-late 90s, that they finally reopened tattooing with regulations, with licensing and all that stuff. And actually around that time uh, is when Alan opened his studio, Groove Tattoo. Uh, and he's been open since then, so he's one of the older studios there in Brooklyn. And uh, you can check him out on Facebook, Groove-Tattoo-Brooklyn-New York-A bunch of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's like that, but don't try to click on the link for his website because it brings you to some weird thing that wants you to install something. I didn't trust it. Please don't trust it. Anyway, uh, you can also check him out on Instagram at Groove, G-R-O-O-V-E underscore tattoo. Now, he's got a lot of... Uh his artwork and, and graffiti up there and old school flash work like this, so please check it out. But before I show you his tattoo work, I want to talk about the American traditional style of tattooing. And this is what I mean. This is traditional Sailor Jerry artwork. They also refer to it as Americana. Now, back in the day, tattooing was much different, you know, because you couldn't just order, go on Amazon or go on some website and, and order everything you need, your needles and your pigments and, and your machines. You couldn't do that, of course. So you had to build your own machines often, or you would mix your own pigments, or even the worst was having to solder our own needle sets. Back in the day, we literally had to put a little eye loop on and sit down at the counter and uh, solder individual needles onto a needle bar that then you'd later use. And uh, it was very, very inconsistent, riddled with flaws, and thank God it has improved over time. But because it was like that back then, these designs had to be simplified. The, the equipment was just not there to create amazing artwork, really high detailed stuff. It wasn't there. And, and also the medical industry hadn't merged with the tattoo industry, so there was just not a lot of knowing how to uh, help the skin heal or get tattoos to heal properly and everything. And so you had to simplify them and you had to get tattoos to look like this. And that's why it was like that back in the day. And the, the color palette was very limited too, by the way. Uh, you really only had reds, black, black, red, brown, green, and uh, I, brown. You know, like that was, most of the stuff was brown, if I'm being honest. But you didn't get those in-between colors. You didn't get like uh, um, light red, medium red, what dark red, it, it wasn't like that, it was just one tone of red, one tone of green. Anyway, you can see on their Facebook that he says, we're one of the only shops in the area that's offering you that true Brooklyn style of tattooing in the tradition of its long gone fathers of the trade. We're historians of the art and we have a deep knowledge of the history of tattooing and the art form. Yada yada yada, this shop is the most dedicated tattoo shop you'll find in this area. Others can try to simulate, but they're only gonna mutilate. <laughs> Man, Alan, that is fucking dark, brother. But what he's saying is that uh, they really hold to this old-school traditional style of artwork and traditional way of doing things. And let me show you some of his artwork. Ah, uh, now, right off the bat, Alan. Come on, man. You've seen some titties. You know what titties are supposed to look like. Where's the areolas? Just two little pimples popping out? Come on. And then what's up with her fist? No fingers, just one solid mass right there. But that's what you get when you try to overly simplify designs, even something this big. He still keeps to that traditional style, overly simplifying everything with just simple bold lines, and very minimal shading and everything. And look at her nose. Look at this Voldemort nose. <laughs> just two little slits, no real shading to speak of. That is just really out of whack. Not sexy to me, guys. Not sexy to me at all. But I'm going to show you more and more of this. Roses, of course, you can judge any artist on roses. We've all done roses. We all kind of have our style of roses. But he does his the same way every time. And if you don't like this style of roses, this is not the guy for you. But even if you do like this style of roses, I have major beef with his application technique. And that's mostly what I want to harp on because... Uh, I'm not really a fan of American traditional. I know there's a lot of people out there that like it for its um, nostalgic purposes, or it's just kind of like a... It's got like this retro flair to it, and, and I can appreciate that. There's a lot of artists that do it really great, but sometimes when it's this simplified, it's just not good. And unless you're really good at applying the tattoos, then this not only is a bad design, but it's also bad application. I'm going to move on and show you. There's tons of these roses that he does this way. And another thing is... 
his yellows. He has such a hard time applying the yellows. I can see it in the red, too. You can see some parts are darker than others. That's just, again, his application technique. It's not spot on. It's not there. And uh, the yellows all have this orange look to them because the skin is so beat up that you're seeing the yellow mixed with the blood. And you can see it at the bottom here. I don't know why you would take a picture and post it online it's covered in blood like this, but yeah. Ugh, it's just, it's so gnarly to me, you guys, and uh, all this redness, this beat up skin, this is not going to heal and turn into like a nice soft fade or something like this. This is just an example of somebody who is not properly applying or knowing how to blend those light grays. I can see it throughout his entire portfolio, just like the yellow, he has trouble applying those light grays. And here's one where he did like medium gray throughout the whole thing, and it's just really, really scratchy, blotchy looking. Really, really not clear, not crisp, not defined. Look at the center of the clock here. Nah, I'm sure that client wanted some gears and stuff, but uh, let's just give him a couple of blotches of gray in there. That'll, that'll be the same thing, basically, right? <laughs> oh, and this one, man, this one really showcases the line errors. And if you ask me, seeing this kind of really kind of shaky and, and, and blotchy looking line work, it tells me that um, those machines that he's using are just not working for him. These traditional coil machines. Now, there's some great machine builders out there. Some guys have been doing it a long time. They've perfected it. So you don't have to upgrade to the new uh, tradition or the new rotary machines. You can stick with traditional and there's a lot of artists that are putting out some banger work with those traditional machines. But it's very obvious when an artist has a hard time with them. They're harder to use. 100%. They're harder to use. Oh, I hate this middle here. This is just, to me, weirdly overly simplified and just yuck and then the blending in the gray and the green in here you can just see empty patches where there's just no no ink that's just a real problem with application but again i think it's because of his <laughs> i think i think it's because of his machines they're difficult to use because they fall out of tune a lot right they could fall out of tune in the middle of a tattoo the the springs start to wear out and you got to try to go in there and tune it but not just like adjust a few screws you have to tune it to fit to be exactly how it was before that's the name of the game with tattooing is consistency and that's very hard to do um not to mention why would you not shave the whole area that you're tattooing like you just shave this area good but then you just left this part here that's not a good idea you're gonna get some ingrown hairs and some issues while healing this was one of his better pieces i guess uh but you know this is what happened happens when you take a, a traditional style and you try to blow it up because he's very used to doing small simplified very minimalistic detail but there's a higher demand now from clients for bigger content with higher detail with better small detail and I think looking through his portfolio I could tell you he's trying to adapt to that but it just doesn't work like a piece like this this is way outside of his wheelhouse some version of realism I guess he was attempting but man just look at these whiskers just large clumps of, of hair coming off the chin there again the red beat up skin shows that uh, he has a really hard time creating smooth gradation smooth shading but yeah just that is far, far off from realism, if you ask me. And I don't think he should be. <laughs> I don't think he should be attempting these kind of thing. If you're gonna stick with traditional, stick with traditional. But don't. Uh, when clients come in, ah, and they ask for something like this. What is this? This is some Islander tribal work. This is very specific. You want an artist that specializes in this. Uh, and you know, Alan, you should be passing this off to a different artist. This is not your wheelhouse. It's not what you do. Uh, especially when it comes to designing it, it definitely does not look as good as the traditional sort of Islander tribal that you see. And this sort of stuff, you need to be very precise. But you can see how this triangle is thicker than this one. And this one's at a different angle than this one. And if I zoom in here, you can see the rake lines from his mag. What that means is a mag is a row of needles, right? That's all soldered together. You can see where each individual needle streaked. And you can see it in all of his shading. They're all streaking there. That's a real no-no in the industry. We don't want that. It's a very undesired effect. And so when I see this in an artist that's been tattooing 30 plus years, that tells me that he's really struggling with uh, with his application technique. That uh, And I think, it, you know, I'm very biased. I use rotary machines. And I think that rotary machines offer a consistency that those traditional machines don't. And so I think that that would be a benefit to him, not having to worry about his machine or tuning it or trying different machines for, for different things. Like if you use traditionals, you need, uh, you need a machine that's tuned specifically for gray wash. You need a, tune, a machine that's tuned specifically for color and when you're using a rotary machine you don't it's a one-size-fits-all thing this is quite angering to me you guys know how much i get angry about people trying to do memorial pieces and just doing a slop job of it this ugh, he's obviously not a portrait artist he definitely should not be doing this stuff he tried to do an american traditional version of a portrait but it just gave the person a weird lumpy face i would like to see the actual photograph that goes along with this because i don't know maybe the person does have a lumpy face but i'm guessing they don't and uh you can again see all this just beat up skin over here this is not going to be nice soft gray clouds they're going to come out real real scratchy look here's the lines again from his shader so that's the kind of thing that i want to focus the most on when i make these episodes is how do they apply the tattoo are they applying the ink properly is there application technique gonna gonna heal well or is it gonna heal scratchy patchy blotchy yuck ah oh, this is a disappointment 
Here's another example of him trying to take something that requires a lot more detail, but he simplifies it down into just bold, thick lines and just blotchy areas of dark. You can't tell what's going on in his belt and stuff there. Just blotchiness. Just straight up blotchiness. Very, very disappointing. Now, I'll give him a little bit of redemption before I move on, but uh, this was probably one of his better pieces. I saw some, you know, 3D realistic look to the compass there, the one down here. He did a cool kind of 3D look on the compass rose. So that's great. I think this is supposed to be a ship kind of busting out of the water, I think. I think so. I'm really not a fan of this simple, squiggly, either smoke or fire background. I think it was just a really cheap effect way to blur them all together and to take up a large amount of space, but uh, that aside, I did want to give him some credit. The blending looked a little bit better in this one, but overall, Alan, uh, uh, I wasn't happy with the stuff that I saw, you know? I really would not be able to recommend people go to you. I think it's it's amazing uh, that you keep up with the history of it and that uh, you're, you're true to your own nature, but I think right now clients are coming in with requests that you're not capable of handling. And I think you really got to consider, like, it's it's not it's okay to evolve. It's okay to move on. The industry got better for a reason. You don't have to stick with coil machines or, or however, you know, and wherever you're getting your pigments and your needle sets. Like, try to evolve with the industry because you can still do that style of art that you love so much from the past and use some of that flash artwork from some of your heroes, but you can do it better, cleaner. You can apply it better where it's going to heal better, all that. So right now, sorry to say, can't recommend anybody go to yet, but guys in the comments below, let me know what you think about his artwork and let me know what you think about traditional artwork. Um, but stick around. I want to show you an artist that really did evolve with the times and kind of blows my mind. Here we go. Hey guys, before I show this next artist, I want to remind everybody that you can definitely help expose a hack. If you know of one that's in your city, uh, just send us a message to the email that's down below. Uh, send their name, the studio, whatever you got, and we'll gladly put them in the show. But don't worry, all submissions are going to be confidential, so have no fear. We're not going to put you on blast for doing a good deed. That's it. Now let's get back to the artwork. All right. For all of you in Brooklyn looking for that nostalgic style of artwork, that retro look to your tattoos, look no further. Let me introduce Ron Moore. Right now, he is working at Hand of Glory there in Brooklyn, handofglorytattoo.com. Go check him out. Beautiful website, right? Kudos to the owner there. Did a great job. This little message pops up for all customers that are trying to get a hold of an artist or something. It's very, very simple to the point, real clean looking. Uh, they also have an Instagram they're uh, kept up with on a daily basis almost. And uh, you can check them out, Hand of Glory Tattoo again on Instagram. I'll put the link down below so you can click on it but definitely check out his Instagram I'm not gonna have enough time to show you uh, so many of these pieces that I was just very very impressed by but you can check him out Ron Moore tattoos on Instagram also click the link here he sells some merchandise with a lot of his artwork on it I think that's a great thing for artists to do especially in times like these where you know you don't know if you'll be tattooing the next day if they're gonna shut us down or not so please go support him check that out you'll be impressed Let's start again with some titties. <laughs> and kudos to you, my friend Ron. You gave her areolas. <laughs> and that just goes to show that you don't have to simplify all the detail. I think this is absolutely a, a pinup style uh, that's traditional. You see this exact type on some of that old school flash art, especially where they hide the hands. They don't give them toes or the foot's angled here on purpose because back then they were doing much smaller designs and the lines were too bold. So it's way too hard to give them uh, fingers and toes. And so it's really common for them to like hide the fingers like this. So this is a very traditional style to this artwork here. But he does it so cleanly, so smoothly. Let's zoom in on some of these lines. Look at how smooth these lines are. Just unbelievable. I think some artists might argue or some clients might assume that bold lines are simpler to do. It's just not the case, you guys. Bold lines require you to constantly be at a perfect 90 degree angle to the skin. So you make sure all of your needles are puncturing consistently to the same depth. And also to make sure you always have the proper amount of ink in there pouring out because it's very easy to, to use up a lot of ink as you're going. So I think whenever I see really smooth, bold lines like this, especially when they look very single pass, it doesn't look like he's doubling, tripling over these to, to try to fix them. Uh, it's very impressive to me. Uh, I wanted to show this design because this is a great show of how he blends the uh, traditional Americana kind of style of art with the, the new school attributes. And the shading right here is a testament to that because very, very smooth gradation that he made in these. Um, I also like that he changed line weights. You can see he used bold lines in some areas, thin lines in other. That's something that obviously was not done in traditional artwork, but nowadays we refer to it as neo-traditional or the new version of traditional because uh, there's absolutely no reason why you can't improve some, keep the artistic style, but improve the application of it and improve upon it. And that's probably one of my favorite styles. It's the most universal neo-traditional. I think the most clients are going to be happy with a neo-traditional piece. Uh, here's a great example too. Uh, again, using multiple line weights, bold on the outside and then thin for these scales. I love this consistency of these scales here and this smooth blending here from black to that green 
I love that sort of sage green color too. It's a great choice, but he's still stuck with very traditional color palettes here. The browns in the face, the red on the underbelly, just really, really clean work. Uh, this white work is very impressive. That's going to stay bright. That's going to stay how it is. It's going to stand the test of time, no doubt. This was one of my favorite ones. I love this. This is 100% traditional. You know, it's overly simplified just like those designs were, but it does not, it's not lacking in any way. He chose his color placement perfectly. I love that red in the backdrop. Contrast the color of the sardines. <laughs> I love this little blur of brown or tan on their underbelly there. And then the, the blend on the greens. You know, when we're comparing this to the Allen stuff that we just saw, how his black never blended out smoothly, and then you see something like this, this is some American traditional I can get on board with. This is some real quality, clean artwork, but it's still kept in that style. Ah, look at this amazing, majestic seahorse licking his back for some reason. Again, he it, it's a simplified design, but it's not too simple. He, he did a great job of knowing where to use lines, but not overdoing his lines, and then choosing particularly where to use thin line weights versus bold line weights. He didn't try to go over the top detail with the hair. He kept it traditional, and that's, what's, that's what the appeal is of a piece like this, and it's absolutely custom. I love it. I loved a lot of his artwork. He's <laughs> a pigeon standing up on the Statue of Liberty's torch. This is some beautiful blending here. He used this great great trick of blending brown into caramel into the gold instead of just doing like uh, all gold or black to gold. I like that he used the browns in there, but it again still has that traditional flair. Um, uh, something that we saw a ton on Alan's work was that beat up yellow uh, where you would always see it bloody. This is absolutely a brand new piece. I can see the redness around it, but it's not welting up. There's not blood pouring out of the yellow. The yellow isn't like diluted by blood and looking orange like it was in Allen's, and so it absolutely can be done. Yellow can be applied beautifully and still keep that traditional look to it. Oh man, the more the, the farther I got into his portfolio, the more and more I was impressed because again with this shading, it's a simple color palette, but it's very, very smooth shading, smooth outline, never a complaint. I love the size of this piece. I love how clean it looks. He doesn't try to overdo it, yet at the same time, they all look very, very impressive to me. And the farther I got in, I started to see more and more detail. Look at that. And here's these kind of simplified roses. That's the style. That's that American traditional style, absolutely. But when I see this rose, I'm not as turned off as I was when I saw Allen's. So that to me says it's just better artistic skill, better application. You don't see any blotchiness in these ones. Really clean application technique without chewing the shit out of the skin. And it seems like over the years, he's just gotten better at better at blending this sort of uh, realism with American traditional. This is not something you see often. And so this is why I'm so impressed by his artwork and uh, I wanted to showcase him because I think he's just got really, really smooth application and you don't see this often. You don't see it done well often to have such bold lines inside of a portrait, but it doesn't look like like blotchy and cartoony. It looks really clean, really intentional. Again, that yellow is just nice and bold. Very, very impressive stuff. Very impressive stuff. Here's those, those roses again, but yeah, I'm just not turned off by them because they look intentional, smooth, clean. Here's something very impressive is the way he did this hair here. This is not easy to have all of these lines right next to each other, equidistant, and just equally as smooth, and then to blend the shading over top of them. That's very time-consuming stuff. He didn't cheap out on it. He didn't just do some squiggles in there, some, some simple black shading. He made it look very, very smooth. He had the room to do it. It was a large piece, so he didn't just cheap out on it. Very happy to see that. Then... As I got farther into his portfolio, I'm starting to see more black and gray realism. And this was something that Alan was real struggling on, was just this smooth gray shading. And then we come over to Ron's work, and you can see he's a traditional artist. He does traditional well. He was trained in it well. But here he is doing some realistic smooth gradation and smooth realism shading. So, again, he's keeping up with the times. He's evolved with the industry. Um, Ron has been doing it a very long time as well, and uh, it's just nice to see that he didn't just get stuck doing one style of artwork and call it good. He moved on, he evolved, he got better and better, and it really, really shows. Very, very impressive stuff. Here's another one, Bernie Sanders. Oh, beautiful work, beautiful work. I love his choice in how he did the hair here. Bernie's got this bright white hair, and so he had to kind of find a way to texture it in there uh, without it getting lost in the skin tone, and I think he did great. He made, made it basically one large skin break there, but it looks like white hair. Really, really smooth shading in there. Very smooth. Very impressive stuff, Ron. And here is something that was a little bit out of his norm, this kind of small, small speckled detail in here. Love to see it, though. A very, very versatile artist. I like to see the, that he's doing gray lining in a lot of this, really thin, fine line stuff, and that just shows an amazing versatility to me. So I'd have the utmost confidence sending any client to him for any any request because he shows that uh, he's mastered these different skills and uh, is definitely going to give you what you want. This is the last one that I'll show, but man, look at that small texturing in there. 
beautifully done. Now, this obviously is not American traditional work, but that's what blows me away about it, is that you see so many different styles in his portfolio, and it's all cleanly done. I love to see that an artist evolves with the times. Love to see it. Ron, you're killing it, man. You're just killing it. I, I genuinely would love to wear any ink by you, and I would gladly refer any client to you. I'm sure your books are full, but guys, go check them out. You're going to be impressed. And as always... All right, you guys, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you get notified. We put out new episodes every week. We go to different cities every week, and we might be coming to your city soon. So stick around. We'll be back next week. And uh, in the meantime, if you're hunting for an artist, don't forget to zoom in. All right, we'll see you next week.